So I missed the ending scene last time, and I'm gonna watch it now. But it can't be that important, right? I mean, what could possibly happen in an ending scene? <laughs> oh, is this the play? I'm so excited for this thing. Falco's busy getting himself into a lot of trouble with Aaron Yeager, I mean Kruger. Oh no. What is he doing? Oh, don't set up Reiner. Falco has no idea. This looks familiar. Where have I seen someone trying to lure a human titan down a stairwell before? Whoa. I did not expect it to go down like this. Aaron is showing his hand. Which means... What? Come on. For a second I forgot I have a whole episode to watch today. I was like, that's it? I can't live with that cliffhanger. But I don't have to, because I live in a beautiful world of all episodes being available. And that will never change. <laughs> okay, so Aaron's showing his hand, which leads me to believe that he's pretty confident right now in whatever he's doing. What reason could he have for contacting Reiner? Perhaps they just want to have a friendly chat over a cup of beverage. <laughs> Black beverage. More likely, it's a final warning to Reiner to give him a chance before whatever thing is set in motion. Oh, I should say that I went back to watch episode one again while I was making the thumbnail for the video. And I'm pretty sure that the guy at the end with the hat was... Uh, John John. So it's not just Aaron here. There's a bunch of people here and they're ready for the plan and maybe they're giving Reiner a final chance. Although that's the most optimistic way of looking at it, I think. Another possibility is that like Aaron is using Falco, he's also using Reiner to set things in motion. Let's find out now. Reiner and Aaron have such an interesting history of like casual reveals, right? Like I'm the armored and he's the colossal and yo, what's up Reiner? Cup of beverage? This is the first time I'm getting a graphic content warning. Interesting. Something like a final confession. Well, here we are. Yo. <laughs> Very casual. Very casual. Oh, Falco, you poor kid. Yeah, yeah. What is this about and what do you want? <laughs> this should be good. This should be very good. And by good, I mean terrible. <laughs> Ally with each other. That'd be cool. There's so much more to be gained. If I look into my own heart, <laughs> what I want is for them to use their powers to get out of this whole thing. Like, get out of this cycle. I don't know. Is that a lot to ask? Yes. The goodness exists in Reiner. The goodness exists in Eren. But they're always on the verge of making these terrible mistakes. And they just keep digging the hole deeper and this whole world is just like a cycle of violence, you know? Imagine what they could do if they just like grounded it to something better. But what do I know? <laughs> I still don't understand the world. For all the reveals we've had, there's still a lot that I have no idea about. What's the truth? The endless question. Will we ever know? Declaration of war. Okay, well there go my, <laughs> my hopes of peace. Right out the window, as if they ever were real in the first place. Maybe this show will, will fix everything. <laughs> this theatrical performance will save the world. There's nothing like the power of song to heal a broken heart. He's performing in the... This is a lot, this guy. I don't like... I don't like where this is going with the civilians. The skin on Aaron's hand must be just total leather by now. I gotta say, it's a pretty dark move using Falco to this extent. How convenient. Is that to get them out of the way? I don't know who's doing what here. This is great tension with the, the play starting during this conversation. I don't know what to make of that choice thing. Just thinking about it very basically, you always have a choice, right? Like, you always have a choice. It may often feel like there's no choice, but a lot of times that boils down to something that 
we're not willing to sacrifice. This is a very understandable way of thinking to me. You know, I think we we all kind of do this where we go down this trail of thinking where we want something and we try to trace back to what it would take to get there. And we inevitably hit on something that is like sacred or scary to touch on. Like in order to get this thing, I would have to do this difficult work, you know, or come to this difficult realization that would shatter my worldview. Go above and beyond what I think I'm capable of. That's sort of where, where things end. But just because those feelings are intense and just because that phenomenon happens does not mean that that is no choice, you know? Actually, I think a lot of times that no choice thing is an excuse. It often comes as a decision first and then a rationalization second. One interesting thing about the conversation though is I feel like Reiner is sort of on the verge of making a different choice. Like Aaron's saying that we're the same and Reiner had no choice, which is why he returned. We're seeing Reiner struggle with his his path, the trajectory that he felt stuck on. And so he has the potential to make different choices. So it's kind of cool and exciting to see Aaron hit him with that a little bit. Meanwhile, Willie Shakespeare over here. <laughs> Aaron has plans, obviously, for this theater, but so does Tiber. This just, you can't just be a play, right? Does he believe in the power of song and dance that strongly? <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> Great depiction of the show. <laughs> Eight-types。Yeah, I feel like that's a pretty accurate and concise way of saying that, but he forgot one very important thing, and that thing is Erwin Smith! <laughs> The one man, by himself, with the help of thousands of scouts, single-handedly driving back the most powerful <laughs> army of all time. Where's that in your play, Willy? Doesn't fit your narrative, does it? He's not a soldier. He's a Herodes spy. Him behind the car titan. Oh, are they operating the turrets? Oh, they all hate him now? Wow. Yeah. Ryan's on his back foot. Because obviously Aaron's been here planning. Now you ask questions. <laughs> there you go. Finally connecting the dots. <laughs> I know I'm supposed to recognize the, the soldier's identity because we saw his face, but it's hard to recognize anime faces. Is it Connie, maybe? But anyway, if Eren is going to offer Reiner a choice here, I already know that Reiner can't accept it because Eren has obviously made up his mind. Whatever is about to happen, Reiner cannot talk Eren out of it because Eren cannot be talked out of anything ever. That was the whole point of the Mikasa OVA, right? Like, Eren's just on a path. But for Reiner, who seems like he's finally started listening to his conscience and having more nuanced thoughts and really taking his life into his own hands, maybe just in thought so far, but, but still, he can't go along with things that risk harming things that he actually cares about on a deeper level because those deeper things are what is getting him to this place, this better place. And those things include the kids. I mean, they're largely the kids. And Aaron just endangered Falco here. And the other the other kids are, are definitely in danger being at this concert. So it would seem it's already a foregone conclusion that this is not going to be a good resolution. <laughs> I feel ridiculous saying that out loud because, I mean, duh. But you can't break my hope. <laughs> not even Attack on Titan can break my optimistic spirit, you know, except at certain moments. <laughs> It's funny thinking about it as common knowledge after everything we've been through, but okay. Okay. Oh? Oh. Well, this is a little controversial. Helos is a fiction. That's what they wanted, right? They wanted a peaceful life. <laughs> Carl Fritz looks so gentle here. A lot of exposition in this play. <laughs> this is sort of a bombshell. A temporary peace. 
they saved their gasps till the end. That was very polite. Alright, so I'm not really sure what this really changes for me. The Helos thing was sort of new and added by the Marleans recently, and it was sort of clear that the Rice family was, you know, looking to live in, in peace. They talked about that. They're clearly not this great enemy that's going to launch Titans onto the mainland. But why reveal this? He said that they're in great peril. But what does that mean? What's what's the peril? Does he mean for the Marleans or does he mean something bigger? I mean, all these nations are assembled, right? So what's the threat to the world? <laughs> it has. Some of your human titans are in a hole. <laughs> Probably have. <laughs> what's your up to, Willie? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the walls are titans. How do they get that many colossal titans? Aaron is the threat. <laughs> Should have known. The rebel against peace. The devil of all earth? Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, don't blame yourself, Falco. Yeah, he's not sorry. <laughs> I wonder just how many people are here from the old squad. Right, Eren could make that, that story real, right? But to what end? Yeah, because we were five years old and, and brainwashed. Here we go with choice again. I wonder what saving the world even means. For me, it sort of feels like a thinly veiled attempt at saying, like, kill my enemies. Reiner, as a kid, probably believed this whole story that we've seen about Helos and the threat of the founding titan and all this stuff. He might have believed that that actually was the only way to save his homeland. Eren, on the other hand, is a full adult and has all the memories. I guess the one thing you could say in his defense, in terms of saving people, like actually saving people, is that it seems like Marley is an eternal threat to the people in parad paradise, paradise. Yet, it doesn't seem like Eren could possibly stop there. Like, he couldn't stop with securing the, the peace and freedom of his people. It seems like he would not only want to wipe out every current threat, but like every potential threat. To me, it just feels like there's something else. It's not just like concern for my friends here. It's wrath. It's a desire for revenge and maybe control or something. He couldn't help bring up his mother dying because that's that's connected, right? It's like, it's an emotional thing. This is not somebody who's thinking clearly. Which is weird for Aaron because he's usually so rational. <laughs> couldn't say that with a straight face. Just as Reiner did before him. This is reassuring. That's good. But... Okay. Yeah, this is... This is a little bit better, at least. More nuanced. Aaron has, like, some kind of mind control right now. <laughs> Recently. Recently. Where have we heard this before? Oh no. He does have some some very weird kind of control now. Is it because he touched uh what's her name? Historia? That was a fun way to end it. <laughs> I may be misunderstanding what just happened, but he touched Reiner and was able to, like, do something to him. I guess he's gotten better at his, uh, his Titan powers. There's definitely a cyclical thing happening right in this very moment, because the Tiber guy just declaring war on the whole island of Paradise completely validates Eren's desire to fight them. But Eren was already there, wanting to destroy them, which justifies what 
Willie Tiber said. Which came first? Doesn't seem to matter. To their credit, what are you supposed to do if someone's trying to wipe you out? But let's be real. This is this is not just about defense. This is about hatred. Are there no heroes in this world? You know, like the only person I'm looking forward to seeing develop is Reiner. Like I really hope he, he could do some good, you know? Like in the scene where he had the gun in his mouth, my strong feeling at that time was like, Reiner, you you can't undo the past, right? You can't make things better. You can do good and that's that's enough now. I feel a deficit, a deficit of heroism after Irwin's death. Where's Levi? We need some Levi right now. <laughs> I miss him. I need some goodness. These people are all like terrible and scheming. Where's Connie? Was he the guy who put them in the hole? That's not reassuring. Where's Mikasa? There's no way she's that far away. We haven't had an edit in a very long time. But about the whole cycle thing and the theme in this episode of choice that Aaron keeps bringing up, having no choice. It's tricky because I get it, you know, like there is evil in the world and evil can take you out and your ideals do nothing for you in the face of force. Like force is sort of the ultimate thing and people are coming to your land and destroying you. What good are your ideals? By the same token, what's sort of hard to get at but I think is important is that as soon as you fall into using what other people do as justifications for what you do, you end up just kicking the can down the road and perpetuating the same evil. It's a tool I see so often in real life. Like the justification for things is often like, well, they did it, you know, like the other side did it. So now we got to do it. The only way to do that is to rise above it and to win without violating principles. And that's such an amazingly difficult thing to do. Like it's nearly impossible. There's like one in 8 million people who can think that way and actually do that. That is the true meaning of strength. And that's actually a choice, right? That's a way more difficult choice. There's only one person I can think of that could do that. And that's Erwin Smith, you know, like, like, that's sort of what made him so beautiful. He just, he wasn't playing the game. He was just focused on eliminating lies and he didn't resort to his worst traits in order to get there. Someone else having done something, some other group having done something does not make that thing okay. I feel like I'm teaching a kindergarten class now, but it's so prevalent. Like this idea is so prevalent. Like, well, what about when they did it? For me, it's so what, you know, so what that they did it. Don't you have something higher to aim at? Don't you not want to be like them in that case? If you realized how terrible it was, aren't you just perpetuating the same terribleness? And aren't you then making them more justified in continuing what they're doing and playing the same game, etc., etc.? If you really want the best for the world, don't you have to do the things you think are best? And I think the reason why that doesn't occur is because of what I was saying earlier about how that takes incredible sacrifice. And usually when people frame things as there being no choice, what they really mean is they don't want to make a certain sacrifice. I don't know. It's tough because I also recognize this is very idealistic, but there's got to be something better than there's nothing except size and there's nothing except like winning at any cost. I don't, I don't believe that. And I think the show is aware of that. These characters are not heroic and I think that's pretty clear. And that's why I'm so happy that we've had Erwin. I know I'm like a huge Erwin fanboy at this point. I guess, I mean, that's that ship has long, long sailed across the sea. But that heroism exists and that heroism can win. And that heroism is maybe the only way out of the tragedy that the show is depicting so clearly. But anyway, I still feel like there's stuff I'm not getting. There's probably a whole lot I'm missing. It's a very complex show. There's a lot happening at once. So I need some time to sort of process it as I watch. But next episode should be insane because now we got Aaron, Titan Aaron, on Marley and Shores revealing himself. How is Willie Tiber gonna react, I wonder? We'll have to see.